I'm Matt with ABC Acres. We're out here today in our greenhouse. And we've got an issue with our tomatoes. It's not all of them in here. It's only the ones on this north wall, which tells me that there's something wrong, not wrong, but um, we have an infection in our soil. I'm gonna cut off this one leaf just so you can see, but we've got early blight in our tomatoes. If you've ever grown tomatoes or potatoes, there's a chance that you've dealt with blight. I'm gonna show you a biodynamic solution or a uh, old medicinal remedy that will treat the blight. I've had great luck with it. It's called horsetail tea, um, also known as BD-508. And horsetail is a miraculous plant. It does some awesome things, uh, both for humans and plants. As always, consult an herbalist before you decide to use something for yourself. But as far as treating blight in tomatoes or potatoes, you can make a foliar spray with the fresh tea, and that's primarily what we're gonna be doing today. But I'm also gonna teach you how to make a fermented tea out of it, which you use as a soil drench. And we will also make some of that. I'm not gonna show you the process. We're gonna talk about it. I will describe it. And then that fermented tea you use as a soil drench. Because the problem with blight is once it's in your soil, it's kind of there forever. I've never used the fermented tea. I've heard it works. We're gonna be trialing it. We'll let you know how it works. If you've tried it, definitely hit us up in the comments and let us know how it works for you. Um, you saw that I cut this sick uh, part of the plant off with this knife. I will definitely sanitize this before I do any pruning of anything else because any blight spores on it could transfer to a healthy plant. But basically, we're gonna go take a look at the horsetail herb. We're going to show you how to make the tea but the first step is once you have the tea made, you want to cut off the majority of the sick or infected leaves as you can, um, which means doing a pretty hard prune. As always, leave enough vegetation to let the plant continue to grow. Don't take more than typically 30%, but in cases like this, you can take up to 50. You can see these tomato plants there, 10 feet tall, 12 feet tall. Um, so we might be actually be able to take off a lot. Anything that looks healthy or just barely sick, go ahead and leave that on, give it the foliar treatment, but let's go take a look at everything just in case you're dealing with this too. That way you can get to treating your plants so you can have a healthier tomato crop. All right, so we're down here. All around me is equisetum. Um, Equisetum likes wet areas, which tells me since we're also underneath this beautiful elderberry tree that this hillside might actually have some sort of seep on it. But let's see if I can get the camera to lock now. This is the Equisetum. This is Equisetum arvensi, um, also known as horsetail. There's two types that you want to use, Equisetum arvensi or Equisetum arvensis. And there's probably 30 different nicknames for it. Um, so horsetail being one of them, depending on your region, you might know it as something else, but it is this plant that's gonna save our tomatoes. It's high in salicylic acid or uh, silica, so it uh, helps strengthen the skeletal system of plants. Um, and historically, it has been used to help treat broken bones, stop bleeding as a diuretic, um, as always, before you use any herb medicinally, consult an herbalist, make sure you know what you're getting into. Um, but due to the high silica content, you can make a tea out of it and add that tea to your shampoos and it'll help strengthen your hair. Um, but it's also high in flavonoids, saponins, magnesium, calcium, and potassium. And it's all those elements that, uh, when you make a tea out of it, make it so beneficial for your plants. So, so this is the equisetum that we were just looking at. We've pulled it out of the dehydrator. In optimum conditions, you wanna have this uh, made so you're not just uh, running and getting it done. In an ideal world, you're gonna dehydrate it in a cool circulated place and not use the dehydrator. Since we need the equisetum, we need the tea for our tomatoes, I opted to use the dehydrator. I used it on the lowest heat setting and got it dehydrated. The next step is to chop it up as fine as you can. I've always wanted to do a cooking show don't I have awesome knife skills? <laughs> um, but then the way you use it, as I said, you can either use it as a fresh tea or a ferment. To make the fresh tea, you're gonna take an ounce 
of this chopped, finely chopped horsetail and add it to a quart of water. Bring it to a boil and as soon as it's at a boil you pull it off and stir it. I'll show you the stirring process. I don't want to make you watch water boil, that's no fun. If you want to make the fermented tea, which is used as a soil drench, you're going to do one ounce to a gallon of water, bring it to a boil, and then let it simmer for an hour. Once it's simmered for an hour, you're going to transfer it into a large crock and let it ferment for um, 10 to 14 days until it has a strong sulfuric smell. Once it has fermented, you're going to strain it into a glass container and you store that glass container for up to a month or up to six months in a cool dark place with a lid on it. And that is for a soil drench. The fresh tea is better used as a foliar spray and I've had great luck treating sick plants. I've never used the fermented or the fermented tea, but we're also going to be making a batch of that and trying to treat our soil because blight lives in the soil. So hopefully we can uh, mitigate future blight concerns with future crops. We're making the fresh horsetail tea. The chopped up equisetum came to a boil, the one ounce in a quart of water. I let it cool. I was stirring it while it came to a boil, let it cool down a little bit and added two gallons of water to that. Um, now we're gonna start mixing it. Um, and before we get into that, I just wanna touch base on water. With any biodynamic preparation or any sort of you know compost tea you wanna make, Ideally, you want to use rainwater, uh, river water, assuming your rivers or creeks are clean um, and not, you know, contaminated by nasty stuff. Um, so keep that in mind. At the very best, do the best you can to use unchlorinated water. So, as I said, for the fresh tea, you start with one ounce of horsetail or bring it to a boil and a quart of water. Once that's come to a boil, you let it cool a little bit, you add it to two gallons of cool water. I've got the two gallons, super, uh, you know, five gallon bucket. Um, you know, in a perfect world, I'd have a ceramic crop or crock. <laughs> I'd have a ceramic crock, um, but I don't. I'm gonna use what I have, um, which is better than nothing. So now I'm gonna start the process of stirring it for 15 minutes. If you're making the fermented tea, you're gonna um, do the one ounce to a gallon and then you put that gallon into four gallons of water and you're gonna stir it for 20 minutes. The important thing, and I'll show you a close up of the stirring is when you're stirring it, you wanna stir it vigorously and create a vortex to expose as much uh, of the liquid to oxygen or the astral forces if you're into that. If anything, you're just trying to oxygenate as much as you can and every couple minutes you're gonna reverse the vortex, really get it disturbed. So we'll take a look at that right now. So you want to get the best, deepest vortex you can, and then you reverse the ways, get the vortex going, vortex going, and reverse directions. And that's how you do your stirring of any biodynamic preparation. Once you're done stirring for 15 minutes, you start using whatever sprayer you want. You want a fine spray and you're going to hit all the foliar parts of the plant that you can. Um, this is best uh, when utilized as early in the morning as possible, but from my experience, it works great. It will help control and uh, even reverse some of the damage that blight uh, can do to your tomatoes. As always, if you have any questions or comments, you know what to do with them. And until next time, happy growing.